Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday evening, November 7th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. We're watching Tropical Storm Ada re-strengthening here over the northwestern Caribbean as we expected it would, having moved northeastward over the last day or so, and it has become a much more compact storm than our video from 24 hours ago when it was broad and loose over to the southwest. We now have something a little bit uh, more well-defined. We have a very clear circulation that, since the sun is setting, is a little bit hard to see. But if we zoom in here on the shortwave infrared as the sun sets, you'll see this glob of convection and this is sheared at the moment because there is southwesterly flow aloft coming into this, pushing this uh, thunderstorm glob off to the northeast of the true surface center, which you can see a little bit of rotation here northeast of Grand Cayman. That's where the surface flow was just a short time ago, and it's likely getting stretched out a little bit as this glob of convection tries to reform it just underneath, but there's also an extension here. So we have this kind of typical sheared look to this cyclone, but it has been strengthening through the day. And the recon plane that's just now flying through there at the mid-levels is finding some rotation of the wind on the southwestern edge of that convective blob here in white in the image underlay. The actual surface center might be just a little bit southwest of that, uh, but again, a pretty sheared and tilted cyclone as you'd expect. But the central pressure is about 991 millibars now, and maximum winds are up to 65 miles per hour or so, making this a strong tropical storm. And uh, this is now getting ready to cross Cuba at some point overnight tonight. And as that happens, it will get disrupted. Uh, and how quickly it reforms on the other side will be important for impacts to South Florida. Uh, here's a quick radar picture out of Grand Cayman. This is the island there. There's Cuba. And you can kind of see the semblance of the low level. The speckly part is the low level flow. So you can see that here. Kind of the surface low is in there. And uh, then to the northeast of that, you can see the convective blob, and this itself is appearing to rotate, and that's mostly in the mid-level, so that's kind of where the mid-level low is. So you can kind of see this tilt toward the northeast with height, again, very typical of the sheared cyclone. Now, the question is, will this remain sheared, and uh, how much will it be limited as it crosses Cuba into the Florida Straits? over the next 24 to 48 hours. Right now you can see in the water vapor satellite picture, the upper level flow consists of this upper level trough over the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. And this is imparting kind of this injection of westerly flow that is dry here. You can see all this dark gray color. And this dry and shearing flow is pushing into Ada. Uh, where it is now. So this is pushing, again, the thunderstorms off to the northeast side and ingesting some dry air. That may change in about 24 hours because the storm is now moving northward. And if you take a look at the outline of the supper trough, which is not going to change a whole lot, there is maximum shear right at the base of this trough where the westerly flow is pushing into the storm. But once it moves into about this area right in here, uh, that pocket of shear uh, gets a little bit weaker in here because the flow is a little bit more anticyclonically curved in here and you're away from the main westerly jet of dry air. So as this tries to kind of run away from that dry stream, it will reach a point where the shear is a little lower. We can see this happen on the GFS upper level flow forecast. There's the storm right now. Here's the trough and you can see that base of the trough forcing westerly flow in. And as we go forward for the next little while, you'll see that once it gets to the Straits of Florida here, uh, it is starting to move past the jet, moves from the, the position of the jet into the trough itself where we get a pocket of lower shear with anticyclonically curving outflow out of that. And this is going to be the optimal position for the storm uh, for the next few days. Uh, it's suboptimal here. And then after this point, it will also become suboptimal because once it fully merges with the upper level low, outflow becomes a little more restricted. And we also start to wrap in more dry air around the circulation in its entirety. So the intensity forecast is a little complicated with time because we go through multiple periods of favorable and less favorable conditions for the storm. At the moment, conditions are not not optimal for the storm. We go through a period of optimal conditions on Sunday, and then following Sunday, conditions get suboptimal again. We can see this on the uh, the moisture plot here, showing again the dry air kind of pushing in with that shear, 
There's our little storm core that's trying its best to stay solid here with that batch of thunderstorms on the northeast side of the center. Large extent of moisture already bringing rain. You can see that here to South Florida and the Bahamas. Already lots of rain extending north of this. That will remain true through Sunday and at least part of Monday. We can see on the model, this will cross Cuba. The dry air is still trying to wrap in, but we get to an optimal point here where the storm is getting tucked into this batch of moisture before the dry air has time to wrap all the way around. And so again, this is the optimal time in the storm environment where we might see this ramp up to its peak intensity somewhere here south of South Florida. The wild card is how much Cuba disrupts it overnight tonight. That's currently kind of an unknown, but given that there's a lot of dynamic convection happening right now with this blob, we're expecting that once this moves over, it will very quickly reform the circulation on the other side of the island. And so this is unlikely to be weakened too awful much by that crossing. But exactly what kind of inner core of convection forms here will be important for determining the maximum winds that could occur. Most indications right now from the model guidance and uh, given that the environment will not be perfect, the expectation is that this will remain at or just below hurricane strength with winds currently forecast by NHC at a maximum of 65 miles per hour or so. They could be higher. We could see hurricane force, you know, 75, 80, 85 miles an hour at a maximum, uh, depending on how this evolves in the Florida Straits, but somewhere in that ballpark, 60 to 80 mile per hour winds are probably what's expected at a max. And over this whole region, we'll see a broad extent of tropical storm force winds well up into the southern and central Florida Peninsula as this northern side is rather expansive and strong wind pushing both ocean water and moisture ashore with lots of rainfall is expected. And then as this continues on, you'll see that as it merges with the upper level trough, it is going to be bending westward here as it interacts with that upper level low. So we're talking about a slow evolving event here, quickly crossing Cuba, but then slowing down markedly, perhaps moving either over South Florida or just south of South Florida and near the Florida Keys as it enters the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. So this track is going to bring a lot of rain up here, and that's going to be one of the big problems is the inland flooding because of the prolonged period of southeasterly moist flow here. And as this moves underneath the upper low, you'll start to see it mix around some of this dry air. It's just not solid green in here because a lot of this is getting wrapped in and looping around. And uh, that's likely to cause some eventual weakening of this as we head into Monday and Tuesday and maybe Wednesday. So you'll see this on the model uh, kind of uh, sit in here. And then after a while, maybe it even intensifies again if it mixes out some of that dry air. That's currently still kind of unclear on this particular run. It does intensify, but it's really not moving anywhere quickly. And one of the reasons for that is uh, because of the upper level pattern that it's sitting in. This is the European ensemble mean showing the storm and then it's merging with this upper level trough that you can see over the Gulf. And so you can see that it gets uh, uh, merged here into a big upper low, but we have this ridge sitting off to its Northeast. And for that reason, this upper low kind of becomes marooned near Southwest Florida and the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, and it really has nowhere to go. There's no big jet nearby steering it. The, the jet over the Great Plains is quite removed from it. So 24 hours later, it's only drifted west a little bit. And then 24 hours after that, it still hasn't moved a whole lot. Now, maybe finally this jet will sink in as this ridge weakens by the middle of the week to maybe pick this up and either force it northeast back into Florida or maybe something else. Uh, maybe a ridge uh, develops to its west and forces it back south. That's currently unclear, this ridge here. Could potentially force it back south toward Cuba. These are questions that we can't answer yet because the steering pattern is complicated. What we know for now is it's going to come across, turn left, and then kind of sit tight and meander in this region for a little while. And it's for that reason that we're talking about a, a long, prolonged event with multiple hazards possible over this region of uh, Cuba, Bahamas, and South Florida for the next few days. We're talking about a track that slows way down here. You can see on the NHC forecast, uh, sitting west of the Florida Peninsula by midweek, likely to bring extensive rain here, potentially a foot of rain or more in spots. And so flash flooding, one of the primary concerns for South Florida with this event, and we'll see how the rain banding sets up. We will have some dry air wrapping in later, which will hopefully take away some of those rain bands eventually, uh, but you have to be prepared for flooding here. And then wind and surf and storm surge will also be concerns. We do have hurricane watches here extending up to the northern uh, Broward County line and then around to Fort Myers on the southwestern side, because again, while they are forecasting something below hurricane strength here, a uh, hurricane strength wind is certainly on the table, and that would be wind greater than 75 
miles per hour. That's possible here. We'll see what happens when it crosses Cuba. Uh, but in general, a uh, strong wind that will cause power outages and potentially uh, problems for many uh, could occur for a prolonged period of time going from Sunday through Tuesday or even Wednesday in spots. And the tropical storm uh, watches do extend farther up the coast to the space coast on the east side of Florida, given that we will have a strong easterly fetch extending far north of the center, even if it's down south of the Keys. And of course, tropical storm warnings for Cuba tonight as the storm will be crossing, bringing max winds of potentially 65 miles an hour and flash flooding. So everyone get ready for this. I am. I live in Miami, so I'll be impacted by this. And on that note, uh, whether or not I'm able to record more videos over the next couple of days entirely depends on whether I keep electrical power. So you'll you'll get updates from me on social media. You can follow me on Twitter at Tropical Tidbits for my regular updates, but also whether or not I'm able to produce a video. Uh, but that's about it for now. Stay safe and be prepared. Thanks for watching.